Hello VHS friends and welcome to this chess circle Capablanca and to this section of memorable games. Today we're going to see a game of one of Dr. Aliehin's famous rivals in the first half of the 20th century, Efim Bolyubov, whom he played for the World Championship. Of course, Bolyubov was not in the same level than Dr. Aliehin, but anyway he was a very strong player and capable of creating beautiful combinations on the board, like the one we're going to witness today. So let's the party begin. Well, the game started with a queen's pawn, d4, and after f5, the Dutch defense, very fashionable those days, played by Dr. Radia him, himself, uh, White chose the fianchetto system g3, knight f6, bishop g2, e6, knight f3, and d5, the so-called stonewall system. White, uh, Black's trying to get control of the important e4 square, but at the same point is losing control of the not less important e5 square. The difference is that uh, while the e5 square is no longer accessible for one of uh, black's pawns, d6 or f6 is no longer possible, uh, white after knight e4 always can play f3. So this square is, let's say, best guarded than e5. Anyway, very... Uh, interesting strategical fight. Castling, bishop d6. Of course, uh, black's only chance to keep a control of the e5 square is uh, by using pieces for that task. And that's why bishop d6 or knight bd7, etc. are important moves in this position. c4, the natural pawn break, c6 holding the center, knight c3, knight bd7, and queen c2, a very important move, um, already noticed by Aaron Ninsubish in his very famous book My System. The idea of this kind of move against uh, the stonewall formation is that the queen is hitting the f5 pawn, so now white is threatening c takes d5. When black's not able to take with the e pawn, e takes d5 because the pawn is hanging on e5, and c takes d5 is far from this hairball because now knight b5 is very powerful move because the bishop is attacked and also the idea of uh, knight c7. So very difficult position for for black already after this. Uh, c takes d5 and that's why black here seen that coming played knight e4 and now after c takes d5 there is no problem on playing uh, e takes d5 white played here king h1 a very strange move but with a very deep uh, idea in mind and we're going to see it uh, right now queen f6 uh, also controlling the important e5 square. And now bishop f4, and this is why it's a strategical idea. By exchanging the dark squared bishops, uh, white's going to gain control over those squares, and black has a lot of weakness on dark squares. So it really needs this um, dark squared bishop. And after bishop, bishop takes f4, g takes f4, the G file opens. Now it's a, a semi-open file. And uh, by playing king h1, uh, white can very easily access this uh, file with uh, rook g1. Of course, at this moment, it's not possible because there is knight, take, knight takes uh, f2 checkmate. So very careful. But of course, first things first. And after queen h6, e3 is very nice move, double peppers because uh, the e pawn defends f4, but now the queen is defending f2, so the rook is free to go to g1 at will. Here, uh, knight f6, probably trying to go knight g4, but problem is that after knight uh, e5, 
reality hits uh, black very hard here because knight g4 is never gonna be possible because the, the knight on e5 is stopping such an idea and the problem is that now black realizes that the knight on e5 is it's very strong piece and you cannot play d6 you cannot play f6 so the only way to deal with such piece is by playing knight d7 trying to exchange it but this means going back so knight d7 rook g1 knight takes e5 b takes e5 knight takes c3 b takes c3 a lot of exchanges here but this uh, doesn't help black at all because now still there is very huge difference between this bishop and this one on c8 that is barely a pawn. The game continued with uh, bishop d7. Well, what tells is very hard to to imagine a, a nice square for this bishop. Probably maybe um, castling at once. Bishop d7, rook d1. Nice move. X rays on d7 and now b5. This is of course a very um, davious, um, but it, it was uh, the 1920s and masters uh, played that way. Uh, but of course, um, maybe castling is still a better idea. And now, very nice move uh, by white. Queen b2. The idea is that uh, there is uh, no problem on sacrificing the c4 pawn because after uh, b takes c4 or d takes c4 even worse, queen b4 is very strong because now black cannot uh, cattle because uh, the f8 square is controlled by this queen and the king is stuck on the center of the board, in the middle of the board and it's uh, very very hard for black to defend this position because now also there is this idea of rook takes d7 for example rook d8 rook takes d7 rook takes d7 and now bishop takes c6 and the rook is coming to d1 queen is taking on b5 or going to d6 a lot of threats and of course uh, black cannot uh, deal with uh, so many threats at once so the position is completely lost so let's go back a little and let's see what happened in the game after this uh, queen b2 of course here black went f uh, for the safe one so he played uh, castling before it was too late and the queen appeared on b4 and now uh, queen a3 Nice move highlighting the weakness of uh, black's uh, dark squares. Rook fd8, pawn takes b5, c takes b5, and now queen a6. And my question for you is what's white's threat in this position? Well, here is very important to notice that white is using x-rays to threaten bishop takes d5 because now after it takes d5 there is queen takes h6 winning the queen because the g7 pawn is pinned it's very visual that uh, here the bishop there is like uh, two x-rays one this way and one on the g file one vertical one horizontal because now when the bishop moves the g file is completely opened and now when the pawn takes this uh, sixth rank is also opened and it uh, makes this uh, queen takes h6 possible so very very nice threat here for white but of course black spotted uh, that threat and played queen h5 hoping to take the queen out of uh, such a terrible x-ray but uh, the position is still uh, very very difficult for uh, black and uh, white has here a very nice combination my question is what would you play here with white well but here believe it or not bishop takes d5 is also possible this is still possible because after e takes d5 the only move 
that makes sense because otherwise the rook is threatened and e6 is hanging and well, black is lost. So he takes d5 and now rook takes g7, the real killer in this position. Of course, uh, the rook has to be taken because uh, king f8 runs into queen f6 and mate and king h8 is it's not good because queen f6 and now there is this discover check and rook f8 is not enough because there is rook f7 check defending the queen and now rook uh, king king g8 runs into rook g1 so the rook has to be taken after uh, rook takes g7 check so king takes g7 but now queen f6 King g8 is the only move now. Rook g1 check, and um, black has to, to sacrifice the queen to, to defend this check. Queen g4, rook g4, pawn takes rook. But now look, uh, okay, black has two rooks and a bishop for the queen, but the problem is the safety of this king. Black has absolutely uh, no safe safeness for for this king is completely safeless and the position is lost after f5 very easily these pawns are huge uh, huge pawns uh, it's terrible uh, the the threats that uh, they established by f6 or e6 so the black only could uh here uh, keep playing for a few more moves after uh rooks uh, c8 e6 bishop c6 well hoping for some discovered check but of course uh queen f7 king h8 f6 that's not gonna happen now rook g is uh queen g7 is a made threat so rook g8 and now very nice maneuver queen c7 threatening the bishop rook c8 and now queen e5 the dark squares again. Now f7 is a threat. So check king g1 and now this uh, little decoy. Now bishop d5, but of course uh, black uh, is uh, totally lost here because uh, white started with f7 check and o only now after uh, rook g7 he took on, on d5 and here black resigned because uh, the position is hopeless uh, d takes c3 is not possible because there is queen c5 very beautiful move threatening the rook and also threatening f8 and after rook takes c5 there is another new queen appearing on f8 and rook g8 is answered by queen takes c5 and black is completely busted here well, so I hope you enjoyed the video and if you like it, please support us with a thumbs up. It's very easy, but it helps us a lot. And if you are new to the channel, I invite you to subscribe and I hope to see you soon in this chess circle Capablanca with uh, new videos, new patterns, but mainly with chess for everyone.